Today we're looking at the letter B. There are a ton of variations of which I'm not going to do all on this piece of paper because they simply won't fit. So I will do them based on variations in um, different aspects of the letter itself. So let's start with the letter B. The letter B is based around the line of universal beauty, a low oval, sometimes a loop here. Notice this is the highest part of the B, not there. So if your oval is over here, your B is probably going to look lopsided. So let's start with the variations. The B itself, this is a little bit low. I generally do a B like this. Where the bowl of the B is lower. Um, but this, they sort of balance each other a little bit better. Or you can do it like this. So this is a little bit wider and the top is a little bit smaller. Again, look at where the highest part of the B is. So what I'm doing is I'm terminating the line of a universal beauty with a um, ball serif, or as I like to call it, a dollop serif as well as the bottom bowl of the B, also terminate. You could also terminate there just to keep consistency. So what we're going to look at first is varying the line of universal beauty. And to do that, we can either do this, as you've seen me do with the A before, and a slightly simpler form of it, where we're also going to use the front of the line of universal beauty. And match it there. And we can also bring it in on itself. Notice how I'm controlling the weight. The three heaviest strokes should be the line of universal beauty, the top bowl and the bottom bowl. Everything else is secondary in weight. So now I'm going to now I'm going to vary the bottom bowl. So you can either stop there or I'll use the simple line of universal beauty so that you see the variations in the bowl. Make a big loop, go back over itself. You can Just a little curve with no ball serif. Or you can and of course you can also leave the bee so that it the bowl of the bee becomes a ligature. The next variation I'm going to look at is how to vary the line of universal beauty itself. So we see this shape. So we're going to change this line of universal beauty. So instead of it starting at the top there, we will start the stroke.
These are all 18th century variations from here on. And make a loop. And make a loop again. Next variation on the B is changing the line of universal beauty up and down. Very typical of a Spencerian shape. And this can come out of here and there. Or you can always start at the bottom of the shape, do a little loop down and soften and up and turn and turn. More complex shapes are a single line, a loop, And then we start getting really complicated by varying this joint where we can go one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven, eight. The next variation um, I'm going to do will look at varying the front of the bowl and how the bowls interact with each other. One. Now, here we go. You can either have a little ball or you can have a loop. Notice I'm matching these up with each other. You can also have A downward pointing loop. These are flatter. And some of the historical variations use the set like shape that we find in German. Some of them vary by adding a bar in the middle here. I'm just going to try and use different flourishes. So each B is actually quite different. And then we have the, um, the lead-in serif. So some of the lead-in serifs um, can be like this. Uh, here we go. Where are we? Um, let's see. Up. So leaving a letter, so let's say we leave the letter D, we go up and join and down and out and one and two and three and back into that letter. We can also do, notice this is at the angle of the script and not at some odd bizarre angle so that the downstroke is actually parallel to this stroke and then we have some historical variations um, which look like this inside the B line of universal beauty up and over and one and two and three and four and five and then a flourish. So from here on in I'm not going to talk I'm just going to do some variations of which there are many. and some really complex variations that start in reverse. So some of the historical variations look like this. Let's see if I can remember them. Um, So 
slightly more complex variations start with the loop. And so we see the line of universal beauty, a loop, another loop, a matching um, apex in the serif, another loop, one and two and three and four, and then a hairline to leave that shape a little bit messy. Sorry about that. And then we have variations where we go from the bottom of the beat. So these are reversed strokes. So they can also be done that way. Some um, 17th century, century variations. and one or two other variations. So this is quite an interesting variation in that up and over, sorry about that, but not connected. And then we'll just finish off with an upright variation. can go back in and just touch these in, or you can start here. You can then come back in and add a second stroke. You can also do the double stroke, as we mentioned in the A. Remember, if you're going to do the double stroke, you need to leave more space, not only to balance, but also to have the space to do the flourishing. I'd probably put another stroke here as well. Very light. Um, and then, of course, you have a really complex B, which we'll finish off with. So we'll go... Let's see if I can remember this. Right. Um, one, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. Oh, I made a pig's ear of that. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, so that's what not to do. <laughs> Um, and then one other thing to consider when you're doing this kind of work is this. You can have a light stroke. You can have a heavier stroke. And you can have a really light stroke. Very fine shade. So the B's, like all the other letters, you do need a little bit of sort of, a little bit of form to them. And I'll just finish off with a French ronde like B. Thanks very much.